Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey if anybody is new here joining me today and if this is your first time and you're thinking what's this all about? Well basically my channel is about believable brown beauty. That doesn't mean you have to be brown to watch. Anybody is welcome to stay and play but I just like doing makeup um, which is much more believable and realistic and there's no caking or baking here so if that sounds like something you're interested in please keep watching. So today's video, I was thinking about um, spring makeup and all the trends that I've seen have all been like daytime trends. But then I thought to myself, what if you're going to an event in the springtime? Like how would you do your makeup then? What would I do if I was going to an event in spring? And I thought, well, that's going to be my video. First of all, we're going to go into skin. I'm using this Makeup Forever Pro Sculpting Palette and I think the palette name is 50. And I'm going to start with this orangey colour here just to do some colour correction. I'm taking a Real Techniques Face Expert brush expert face brush, expert face brush, and I'm just going to buff this into this part of my face. This just helps to neutralize any kind of darkness that I have in this area. I don't really have much. You can see I have been a little heavy handed here, so I'm just gonna blend that down. Because the purpose of color correcting is to readdress the balance. You shouldn't really see the colour that you've corrected with if you've done it properly. And I'm taking my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Amand. If you guys have watched my channel before, you know that I like to leave my concealer to um, dry down a little bit before I blend it through. So we'll just leave that on. And today I'm trying a new foundation. So I have got samples of the Fenty um, foundation. And I've got colour 430 here and this one is 420. And I think I was closer to 430. So I'm going to take some of that. I'm going to go back in with my face expert, no, expert face brush. And just blend this in this part of my face. I'm going to try and carry this colour down as far as I can. It's really lovely and golden, but I think it's actually a little bit too dark for me. So I'm going to take some of the 420 and just build on top of that. It's nice on the jawline, but here it's reading a little bit too dark. Yeah, that's better. So just blend the 420 in the middle of my face. And I'm going to go back and take a bit more of the 430, which is a bit warmer, and use that on my forehead a tiny bit. And even though I don't usually put foundation on my forehead, today I am going to. Just because I feel like it today. Now you can see, this is a perfect example. This foundation looks great on this part of my face, but it looks very ashy on my forehead. So I'm taking my number nine Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation Stick and just working that into the edges so it blends up nicely. Go back with the same brush and just buff that away. Then I'm taking a 142 Concealer Buffer Brush from Zoeva and I'm just gonna blend in my concealer. This eye is really bloodshot. I had an eyelash just going through this eye. I'm trying to fish it out as made my eye go completely red. Then just go back with my face expert brush. Expert face brush, I'll get the name right by the end of the video. Expert face brush and just blend that in. Okay, so for today I wanted to do something different as well. And I always generally keep my brows their natural colour. But today I thought oh, I'm going to lighten them a little bit and see what that's like. I used to do this quite a lot actually, but I just kind of fell out of the habit of doing it. And then I remembered it again today, so I thought, yeah, I'll give that a go. So I'm taking the Waterproof Brow Set from MAC, and the colour I'm using is Red Chestnut. And I am literally just brushing this up into my brows. And all that's doing is taking the strength of my brows down, so it's lightening them a little bit, but more than that, it's just making them softer. This is a really good thing to do if you don't want to bleach your brows but you want to have softer brows for the day. And if you look, this brow is now much softer than this one. So even though I've softened my brows, I'm still going to go in and define them a bit more. I'm taking my NYX brow pencil in uh, Espresso and I'm just going to gently fill in my brows. Yeah. 
getting eyelashes still in my eye. It feels really weird. Then I'm just taking the spoolie and just brushing everything through. And I'm going back to my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, taking a tiny bit more, and I'm just going to carve out my brows. I am using a, gosh, this is a 212. I think it was a 212. I can't remember the name of this brush, but it's just the flat, thin brush from MAC. Any brush that shape will do. I don't usually use this one. I usually use, oh, what is that reflectant on my face? Mm -hmm. I don't usually use this brush. I usually use a 239, but... I don't know where mine is right now, so I'm just going to use what I've got here. Then I'm just taking my concealer brush just to work the edges of that away so it's nice and seamless. And for me, spring skin is all about really fresh, bouncy, balmy, dewy looking skin. So that's what I'm going to create today. And I am using two illuminizing things today. I'm using my Giorgio Armani Fluid Sheer. I'm going to take a tiny bit of that. And then I am using my Cover FX um, Enhancer Drops. And the color of this one is Candlelight and the Armani is number 10. I'm taking a tiny bit of this. And I'm just going to mix them together with my ring finger. And I'm taking a Real Technique setting brush and just working that product into the brush. Because what you don't want is a lot of this highlighter to be deposited in one place. You kind of really want it to make it look like skin. So if you have a brush that puts too much product down in one place, you're going to have to spend ages blending it or you, might, you may over apply. But I just want this to catch around the cheekbone in a really subtle way. Do the same on the other side. Just do a tiny bit in the center of my nose. Okay, for me, my eye bags are still showing way too much. So I'm gonna go back in and add more concealer and just let that sit there for a while whilst I do other things to my face. I think the eyelash is definitely still in my eye because this eye is so bloodshot now. It does feel like there's something in there, but alas, we press on. So for my eyes, I'm gonna keep the look really soft and I'm taking a Beauty Pie, um, like an eyeshadow cream stick and the color is in Choco, I believe, yes. And I'm just gonna run this on my eyelid. I've used this a couple of times before and I actually really like it. So I thought it'd get another feature today. I'm gonna to get a smaller mirror again. And I'm taking a 224 from MAC and just blending this up on my eyelid. I really love the texture of this um, product. I'm going to do the same on this one. So just concentrating the colour on the mobile lid and then using the brush to blend it up to the crease. And I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Make it up a bit higher in here to create a bit more drama. Go back and blend that concealer out again and just concentrate the blending on the really dark part here. Then I'm taking a 219 pencil brush from MAC and I'm using a tiny bit of this Beauty Pie stick, but I'm putting it on my hand first. And I'm just going to take this and run it underneath the eye to create a little bit of smokiness there. Small over again. And then just take my 224 just to really blend and connect everything together. Then I'm taking my Urban Decay Naked 2 palette and I'm using my 224 because I want a really soft wash of colour. And I'm going to use um, YDK, which I think stands for You Don't Know. That's what I'm saying it stands for. I could totally be wrong. And then I'm just going to sweep a tiny bit of this over the centre of my eye. Because I don't really want it to be um, a colour. I'm doing it more for texture to create more dimension on the eyelid. So just really blend that through. Then take a clean 224 with no products on and just really buff that into um, the cream shadow underneath. Then I'm taking a black hole pencil from Estee Lauder. This is the Col Noir. And I'm just running this along the lash line. And take the same 219 that we used before that's got a little bit of the cream shadow on it and just blend that liner in. 
I'm just using it to create a bit of length here and a bit of definition, but I don't really want it to look like a liner at all. I'm going to do the same underneath as well. And I'm taking the coral pencil and actually putting it in my waterline. I'm taking my In Extreme Dimension 3D. No, no, no. I'm taking my Extended Play uh, mascara in Giga Black. And for anyone who hasn't watched my videos before, I always use two mascaras. I like to use this one first because it gives a lot of. Um, definition and separation to the lash and it acts as a really nice primer it's also water resistant so it stops my mascara from running even though i don't ever have that problem but if that's a problem or an issue you have i definitely definitely recommend this mascara you can do no wrong in my eyes it's really good as well if you have short lashes or lashes that are really tightly curled because the wand is really stiff so it's really good at like getting in there and separating and pulling your lashes out so do that on the top lashes, make sure you get the corners as well, not the side of your nose like I did there, but we'll clean that later. And then the lower lashes. And with my lower lashes, I like to keep my mascara really close to the root so that the focus is on the top lashes that are like pulling the eye up. Then this is my In Extreme Dimension 3D Black Lash Mascara and I'm going to use that on my top lashes. And I love this mascara because it creates such great volume. So now I'm going to move on to the lips and um, I've seen this in magazines like forever and ever but when they do like a blurred lip line and I thought, well the model's always white and it's always like um like a fuchsia pink or a bright red and I thought is that gonna work well I'm not gonna do a blurred red lip because that just doesn't feel like it's gonna be a good idea but I thought maybe I'll try it for something deeper so I'm taking this lipstick it's called lingering kiss it is discontinued but it's pretty much the same as sin from mac it's just a really deep like blackened cherry red and I don't know if this is gonna work I've never tried it before but I thought I'd give it a go and if it does then we've all learned something new today and if it looks hideous I'm gonna go back and do my lipstick how I normally do it so I'm gonna go straight with the bullet onto my lips and take it up quite close to the edge a little bit too high here and then I'm taking this Real Techniques lip blur brush is that what it's called yeah and just blending the edges away still need a small mirror stage so you cannot see that far Actually, I like it. It does look really nice, but I don't want the lips to be this dark or this strong. So I'm going to leave it on because I kind of want it to be a stain underneath the lip gloss and then um, I'll change that later. What's happening to my voice? <coughs> okay, so now I'm going to go back to blush and I'm using my usual, my Sephora Creamy Lip Stain. I just, I'm really into pink at the moment in number eight. Just put a tiny bit on my cheeks and go back with my Expert Face Brush. I think I got the name right that time and just blend that through. I really love liquid lipstick as um, blush. It stays so well. So I'm going to take a tissue. And really block that lipstick off and then yeah, I've got this really cute little sample um, lip gloss from NARS and it's called Priscilla and it's almost the same colour as my creamy lip stain from Sephora. I'm going to use this on my lips over the gloss, over the lipstick. And 
Now I'm gonna get rid of this mascara. So if this ever happens to you, don't try and move mascara on, it's wet. Wait for it to dry and then you can just flick it off. So I'm gonna take a little brush. Well, that wasn't actually dry enough, but it's fine. I got rid of most of it and I'll just go back in with my concealer brush and blend that through. Now I'm going to blot the gloss again a little bit. Because I want it to have a sheen, but not necessarily really be glossy. And then just continuing with this kind of balmy, sheeny look to the makeup, I'm going to take a tiny bit of lipstick. This colour is Sandy B from MAC. And I'm just using that on my ring finger and I'm just going to press it in the middle of the eye here. And then use another finger just to blend the edges. And take a tiny bit of the lipstick and use it in here as a highlight. I was gonna see if I could go throughout this makeup without doing some contour, but I feel like I need a little tiny, tiny bit. So I'm gonna take my um, Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation in, is this 10.25? Yeah. 10.25 in Cool Espresso and just like the smallest amount here. I don't use a lot of contour when I do it anyway, so I kind of feel like I can do it all the time because I use such a little amount. Actually, let's do a tiny bit on my temples too. Then I am taking a Zoeva face shape brush in 110 and just working that in. Okay, I'm feeling super experimental at the moment. I'm like, oh, what is this lip gloss? What would that look like on the cheeks? So I'm gonna give that a go too and see what that's like. So it's the same color that I've got on my lips. I'm just gonna take my ring finger and I'm gonna kind of use it as a highlight here. Ooh, that is nice. That was a good experiment. Okay, do the same on the other side. Then I'm going to take mm, another uh, 110 face brush, a clean one, and literally just blur the edges of that here. And a tiny bit on the apples just to connect it all together. And blend that away as well. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that looks. And now that I've got all my color products on, I'm going to go in and strategically set the places I want to be set. So I'm using my Mineralized Skin Finish in Dark, and I'm using a contour brush. I'm just setting underneath my eyes but avoiding this area here and going down the sides of my nose. It doesn't look shiny here ever. It doesn't look good shiny here ever. And sit underneath my eyes there as well, my bloodshot eye. And then on my forehead a little bit. And then I'm taking Dark Deep, which is redder. I'm just running that on my jaw and on my head, my forehead, seven head really, but you know what I mean. Is that blended properly, this, this gloss here? I'm just a little bit dubious about that, so I'm just going to double check and make sure that it is. 
So guys, there you have it. This is my take on a springtime evening makeup. Um, like I said, for me, the skin still has to be really fresh and I love like the layering of textures. I love how expensive it makes the makeup look and um, it's just different because in the winter, generally people tend to be much more matte and much more hard and much more set. And I just love the softness of all the textures and everything kind of smushing together. So yeah, that was it. Um, I learned some new things today. The lip thing, the blurred lip thing actually works. I probably wouldn't do it with a bright color, but with darker colors, I think it looks really nice. And I really like this um, use of gloss on the cheek as well. So I hope that was helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so you get like, they tell you when I do videos. Um, also follow me on my Instagram, I'll leave my handle here. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.